Easter, everybody. Easter. Welcome. Thanks for gathering together this morning as we celebrate the best news ever. And uh, thanks to those uh, sitting out in the gathering area as well. I think with the TVs and the speakers, you can hear and see okay. Thanks for, uh, for all being here. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, have you heard the story about the uh, three expectant fathers? They were in the waiting room back in the day when husbands waited in the waiting room to hear news about their wives giving birth, and so they were waiting as uh, their wives were in the delivery room, uh, three guys together, and the nurse comes out and talks to the first one, and she says to him, congratulations, you are the proud father of twins. And he says, wow, what a great surprise. I'm the father of twins. And he said, you know what? It's incredible. I play baseball for the Minnesota Twins. Isn't that, Isn't that a coincidence? I had twins. I play for the twins. And then the nurse comes out to the second, second man, and she says, congratulations. You are the proud father of triplets. Your wife just gave birth to triplets. And he said, wow, triplets, what a great, great blessing. Man, and you know, what a coincidence. I happened to work for 3M, for 3M company, and I had triplets. And then she comes out, the nurse comes out a few minutes later and uh, to, the third, to the third man, and he kind of runs to the exit, and she follows him and says, what's the matter? Why are you running away? And he says, well, I'm afraid of what you're going to tell me because I work for 7-Up. <laughs> Yeah, life is full of surprises, right? And uh, so what I want you to do right now is to, uh, those of you, I don't know if there's enough for everybody, but there's Bibles in front of you. I want everybody to take the Bible that's in front of you and open it up. Isn't that a great surprise? Did you see the butterflies? Open up your Bibles. All right. Isn't that great? Easter's a day full with great surprises and new life. Those butterflies represent new life. And now as you're still buzzing about that, what I need you to do is uh, to take those and to uh, wind them up again, grab the tail and wind them up about 20 to 25 times, put them back in the Bible so the next service can enjoy that surprise too. So everybody do that. Yeah, Easter is certainly a celebration of new life. And speaking of new life, I need to tell you that uh, our son, Ben, and his wife, Matea, down in Arizona, I'm talking about expectant parents and expectant fathers. They've been expecting for nine months, and a week ago, Palm Sunday, uh, we became grandparents for the first time. So you can cheer for that and rejoice on that. And at the risk of uh, being one who kind of sounds like he's the only one that's ever been a grandparent before, um, we are proud to announce the birth of Henry Timothy Selbo, so we're excited about that. I was able to spend a few days down there this week. My wife Lori's still down there, and uh, Todd and Yvonne Oppold, uh, Matea's parents, are there as well. But I'm going to show you a few pictures just to humor me a little bit. There's Henry. There's Henry again. Now look at him for a minute. Doesn't he look so intelligent? I mean, don't you think he looks so intelligent? And uh, look how handsome he is. And I can tell that he's uh, going to be musical. He's going to be athletic. He's going to treat everybody so kindly. Uh, Grandpa Todd and I think he gets all those traits from us grandfathers. But I want you to do something. This service is live streamed. And so uh, I've told Henry already that uh, 
He's going to be, I'm going to be preaching. And so he's there in Arizona and he's watching me preach. And I told him he can't fall asleep during any of grandpa's sermons. So I know he's not sleeping. So everybody kind of look and uh, the cameras are going to get you and wave to Henry and everybody say, hi, Henry. Ready? One, two, three. Hi, Henry. All right. Henry's going to remember that for the rest of his life. All right. It is a time of celebration. It's a time of celebration for us and our family, and I pray and I hope that it is a time of celebration for you as well, because this day we celebrate life. We celebrate new life. So much to be thankful for. But I know as well as you do that in addition to thankfulness and joys and celebrations, that life has its challenges. Last week, Pastor Heidi talked so well about the ups and downs of life. One day, she said, you're kind of like your March Madness pool, right? If you have March Madness brackets, it's all looking good. And then all of a sudden, there are upsets, there are shockers, and your bracket gets wiped out. I had the University of Houston winning it all in my bracket. They lost the other day. And she said, life is kind of like that. And that's true. Life is like that. It's a mixture, right, of joys and new birth, but also some challenges and difficulties in life. Think about the women who went to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. They were so startled by the news that Jesus had risen from the dead that they, the Bible says in the text that Dave read, that they ran away in amazement and fear. Amazement and fear. Life is a mixture sometimes of amazement and fear, joy and sorrow, new babies, new life. But we live in a world, you know, that is rocked by war, violence, the stuff of sin and death, fear and amazement all mixed together. And you know, that's why the news of this Easter Sunday celebration is such great news. We have a God who is way bigger than anything that you will face. Anything you will face, good or bad. We have a God who is with us in our celebrations because Jesus has come back to life. He's present with us this morning. But also a God who has looked sin and death in the eyes for us and he has said, enough. I'm destroying the power of sin and death for you. It is a gift access through faith in Jesus Christ. Lori and I watched a movie recently that had in it the line that said, our losses may be great, but our God is greater. I like that. Our losses in life may be great, but our God is greater. You know, after having been brutally nailed to a cross on Good Friday, God raises Jesus to new life, and that means that life wins no matter what. Life in Jesus wins no matter what this world may throw at you. And speaking of new life, how many gardeners do we have in the house tonight, today? How many gardeners? Any of you have perennials in your yard? You have perennials? I'm going to count to three, and if you have perennials, everybody yell out the kind of perennials you have on three, all together. One, two, three. All right. My wife, uh, she has hydrangeas. Uh, let's take a look at the picture of her hydrangeas by our front porch. Those come back every single year. Aren't those beautiful? Uh, and peonies, the pink ones. Let's watch, look for peonies. There they are. Those come back every year, 16 years. Haven't had to replant them. They uh, continue to pop up every June. The next picture is from my daughter, Sarah. Those are, are in Arizona, calla lilies. They bloom each year, even through the blistering heat of the desert uh, summers. Perennials, right? They come back year after year, and I think we can use them as a reminder of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ because Jesus doesn't go away. They're reminders for us that even in the joys, but also in the long winters or long summers of life, God meets us in those places. So today I have a perennial story that I want to share with you. This is a true story. I said earlier that life is a mix of amazement, joy, but also some challenges, maybe some fear. 
And life can and does sometimes throw at us some overwhelming news, some difficult news, news that needs a strong word of Easter hope. The story goes like this. My wife, Lori, works with a young woman named Lauren, and Lauren and her husband, Jake, have two young boys. And last fall, Lauren's mother-in-law, her name is Debbie, she's about my age, she suffered a bad stroke. And it was tough news. tough news, it was difficult, tough going. But they were moving through it together. But not long after the stroke, Debbie was also diagnosed with a very fast-moving cancer. And during that time, they received meals from Gloria Day, so thank you for that, and thank you for that ministry. But Debbie was always, even through her stroke and through her diagnosis of cancer, thinking of her family first. And so she wanted to give her daughter-in-law, who loved perennials, and to give her family an early birthday present. This was last fall, and Lauren, her daughter-in-law's birthday isn't until next month in April. But Debbie said, Laurie, I'm going to give you these perennials uh, early for your birthday so that we can plant them in the fall and that they're going to bloom in the spring right around your, your birthday. So she gave Lauren and their family 100 tulip bulbs. 100 tulip bulbs, and she gave them early, as I said, so they could be planted, and Lauren kind of laughed, and uh, she loved them, but she kind of laughed and said, 100 bulbs, that's a lot to plant, but they did that. They took them all, they planted them in their yard underneath the tree, all 100 of them, and they made it through the holidays, but Debbie's illness continued to get worse, and she was hoping to live long enough to see those tulips bloom in the spring. And in the meantime, Lauren and Jake discovered that they were pregnant with their third child, and that gave Debbie, this grandma, a new goal. She wanted to live long enough not only to see the, the tulips, but more importantly, to see and to greet her new grandchild. The sad news is that it didn't happen that way. Debbie didn't make it to see either the tulips or to meet her new grandchild. She died just a couple of weeks ago, earlier this month. And sometimes I ask in my sermons, as do our other pastors, given the realities of this world, the realities of illness, the realities of war raging in Gaza, raging in Ukraine, and all the violence going on in Haiti, and way too many people, even in our community, even in our city, going hungry every night, can we and should we, given all of that, be rejoicing on this day? Should we be really be shouting Alleluia, which means praise God? Should we really be waving our praise God sticks, our Alleluia sticks? You know, the women run to Jesus' tomb on that morning, and they're worried about the boulder, about the stone that is in front of the tomb. And they ask the question, who's going to roll this stone away for us? And so I ask, can we rejoice, given all the stones and the boulders that so often get put up, not only in our lives, but in our loved ones' lives, or even in this world, that get put up and block and try to rob us of the abundant and joy-filled living that God wants for us? Can we rejoice? And we wonder, too, who's going to roll those stones away for us? It's like the Apostle Paul asks in the book of Romans when he says, what are we to say about all of these things? Friends, the good news is that today, of all days, we can and should be honest about the realities of sin and illness and death. But today we announce and we can know with absolute certainty that yes, because Jesus walked out of that grave, that life wins, and that the powers of sin and death have been defeated for you, for me, for this world, access through faith in Jesus Christ. And that means that life wins no matter what. Lauren's mother-in-law, Jake's mom, Debbie, died way too soon. But dear friends, the Easter message is that Debbie's death is not the end for her. And death is not the end for you and me either. 
Debbie had a goal of seeing those perennial bulbs and of meeting her grandchild for the first time. Guess what? She still will. Those goals are going to be met because of Easter. She has and we have, by God's grace, through faith, a sure and a certain promise of a glorious and a grand reunion with those that we love. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when he said that, he was serious about it. There is a place prepared for you and me, together with our loved ones and so many others from all corners of this earth that we're going to have eternity to get to know. So as you get together with friends or family today, or as you're together today with this, your church community, give thanks to God. Rejoice in this gift of life, because life is so precious. Celebrate those times in your life that you can celebrate, but also think about those that maybe you're missing today. So who are you missing today? Who isn't going to be around that Easter dinner table this afternoon who has gone on before you? Easter means that you and I are in for a great feast a great feast together with all of them, a feast that's going to last forever and ever and ever. Like the women heard at the tomb when they ran there in the morning, they heard Jesus is not here. He's no longer here amidst the stuff of death. He has been raised. And that means that life wins no matter what. And in closing, let me say this, that becoming a grandfather for the first time, certainly that brings a lot of joy, but it kind of causes a person to step back. It certainly has for me and to do a little reflecting on my life, maybe taking a big picture of things. So I've been doing that, and I've been thinking about the joy, the celebrations, family, friendships, great people, so many congregations I've been able to be part of a new grandson named Henry, lots of gratitude. You have those stories too, right? Certainly there's been some fears, there's been some challenges along the way, no doubt. But becoming a grandpa also causes me to reflect on just how quickly the time goes. We know that, right? This time goes very, very fast. And so I ask, how am I going to use the time that God has given me? to make a difference. I want you to ask that too. This Easter, do some reflecting on your life. Give thanks to God for the celebrations. But also ask yourself, how are you going to use the time that God has given you on this earth to bring life to others? That's kind of the Easter call for us, right? To do what we can to bring life to others, to share the good news. The women ran away from the tomb in fear and amazement. And it says they didn't tell anybody, at least for a while. And I think that leaves it open for you and me to answer the question, who are we going to tell? What are we going to do when we leave this place? Who are we going to share this good news of life with? How are you going to bring life to others in the time that you have left? You know, it's kind of a scary thought a little bit. But for me, as I reflect on my life, in addition to the prayer, Lord, use me, and I encourage you to pray that prayer too, Lord, use me. But as I reflect on my life, you know, for me, I'm uh, way past middle age. I'm kind of maybe entering the fourth quarter of my life or well into it. Who knows? And one day this world's going to go on without me. And one day this world's going to go on without you too. Maybe that's a scary thought, but you need not be afraid because of Easter. Because you know what? Easter changes everything. It changes everything. A whole new world in Jesus coming out of the grave. Jesus breaks in and brings a whole new reality to you and me. You have a future that isn't just one or five or 25 or 55 years. Whatever it is, the time that you have left on this earth that God gifts you with, it is a future rather that lasts forever. Back to my wife's friend Lauren and her family. Yeah, they're sad about Debbie's dying way too early. But they have a plan. They have a grand plan. They're going to gather this spring. They're going to wait for those lilies to bloom, maybe around the time of Lauren's birthday next month, to celebrate the birthday gift that, get, that Debbie gave to them last fall. And they're going to gather, they said, in the yard, under the tree with all those tulips blooming, and there they're going to have Debbie's memorial service. And the tulips are going to be a reminder year after year, perennials year after year, that Debbie is not gone. 
She's not gone. She has a strong, a strong faith in Jesus Christ. Rather, she is now in the loving embrace of this God who loves her and this God that embraces her. And they, like us, will look forward to that grand reunion that certainly awaits every single one of us through faith in Jesus. And so, friends, today, because of Easter, because of Jesus and his gift to you and for you, life wins. Life wins. Life wins no matter what, no matter what. God loves you. Happy Easter. Amen. Now may the peace of God, that peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to do some